plan, again, it was only on the other side of the town, northwest, where it actually focuses through to a place called Mount Grey, which then um, transmits through to America. And this was uh, 800 metres northwest of the tower, and the road again was an absolute mess, and no other part of the road was affected 5 k's each way. Now, this is an area where people who had been living in houses in this area, in this particular house, which had a very high-pitched humming noise coming through it. In 1996, the people were saying in the middle of the night they couldn't sleep because of this really loud humming noise. I've just been listening to a, a video um, from... Um, Kiev, I think it is, but also other countries, and they're also experiencing this high-pitched humming noise. Now, it just seems odd to me that the only area where we had the liquefaction northwest of the tower was where this high-pitched humming noise had been heard, and the people who lived there, each family that lived there died of heart cancer. The next one came in, heart cancer. The next one came in, heart cancer. So the people got oh. sick, the humming noise was there, and the most quake damage was in this area. Did the uh, Araya 358 tower tilt again after the February quake, Penny? No, it didn't tilt this time. Um, it sank three metres into the badly liquefied ground and continued to transmit under, over, through the city while it was sunken. So it was actually transmitting under the ground. And the guy wire support, which they'd actually, now I now know they'd actually boosted the AM power up on that guy wire on the 21st, the day before the quake, which is why I hadn't actually um, uh, been able to stay at my farm, why I'd had to evacuate. It was because they'd actually increased the power on the guy wire. Well, it, it's, it seems very dangerous to transmit when the tower's sunk into the ground. I wonder if there's anywhere else in the world that this has occurred. I don't know, but I would love to hear from anyone who does know about transmissions under the ground. Um, and we later found out that the 358-foot tower had sunk one metre in September, that it had sunk into the ground in September, and they'd continued to transmit. Now, an AM, um, FM actually has dipoles that are attached to the radio tower, but so they transmit off these antennas. Do you have any evidence, Penny, that this new small Ahuria tower has contributed in any way to the quake harm you observed when the big tower had sunk three meters into the ground in February? Um, when, I say, when you say that, well, in a similar way, yes. On, uh, on June the 13th, it, um, when we had the Sumner um, big quake where half of Whitewash Head fell into the sea, it was this missile... The harm we're looking at is, again, the same as what we saw in, in February 22nd, is if a missile had exploded, gone under the ground, and when it popped up again, caused serious harm only in one area 800 metres from the rear tower site, where the licences show the frequencies focused towards some of the whitewash head. This was an identical effect to the February 22nd, when the only serious quake harm was if a missile had exploded and caused serious harm at 300 metres and 800 metres, only in the direction the licences show us the area frequencies focused into Littleton Fairmead. So, I mean, we've got this double pattern, and, and nowhere else on June the 13th did we have any problems at all in uh, the vicinity of the Ruria Tower. It was only where it actually um, is focusing towards it. So I find that connection extraordinary, um, and so it all gets beyond coincidental. I'd written to um, Mr. Joyce, who's our head of Minister for Communications, and made these comments about it, and he said there's just um, absolutely no way that they uh, could actually be connected. It's all just um, coincidences, but the more coincidences, coincidences there are, um, the less, the more likely it seems to be there is a connection. Mm, so, I mean, basically the information you have shows that Radio Network seems to have a strong association with Texan oil and interests. Uh, well, that was the information that I got on um, Clear Channel Communications' um, connection with the Radio Network car. And, yes, the past evidence show there are clear links with uh, Clear Communications, the Bush, other oil-rich families, and both Republican and Democrats who have been directors of Clear Channel Communications. Um, there's, you've got a US... Republican politician, Mr McCall, who's been involved in um, anti-terrorist activities and communication systems, and he's the son-in-law of Larry Mays, who was the founder of Clear Channel, 
and Laurie Mays, um, one of the things he, it was called Clear Channel was because they could transmit, they found a way of transmitting thousands of miles um, a, a, a distance from the antenna. So um, there does definitely seem to be um, a link with the um, politicians and the oil families and Clear Channel Communications. Now, Penny, in the U.S., there is a heightened awareness of risks to the environment from fracking and the possibilities of increased quakes. Now that the national government has given out licenses for mineral extraction in many Canterbury areas, are the people worried about this? Yes. Um, they have uh, recently become very um, worried about it. Media coverage, uh, nobody knew anything about it. Nobody knew very much about the oil. And they've raised awareness of the vulnerability of our precious clean water and the lack of protection and legal compensation when the land is adversely, adversely affected by the fracking effect. The National Government's denied any risk can occur and is supporting the mining applications, and they seem to be failing to protect New Zealand's environment in, in, in their haste to you know, just keep these mineral extract investors happy. But um, the Labour Government and the Green Party um, both seem to be um, taking on board the implications and um, are looking and asking for more protections. But the national government's extremely powerful at the moment, so it looks like um, we're in for a pretty bad environmental risk. I don't know, it's very frightening. Mm. Now, um, Penny, you told us some interesting information had come your way recently which uh, adds to your concerns with regards to the pros prospect of the stunningly beautiful South Island of New Zealand uh, perhaps turning into the boho of the Pacific. Well, the um, Germans, as you know, when I said the roar of the Pacific, they destroyed um, beautiful parts of Germany with their industrialisation. And now I understand that um, the Germans are up in arms about fracking in their country, but we've got a German company uh, over the last year has purchased more than 30,000 acres of South Island land, and um, our investigations indicate it's the land where licenses are allocated for mining. And somebody said to me the other day, it's really weird that this company which is small German family investors, is involved in minerals, and it's called Aquila, which is the same name as the Texan oil ship is called. Mm -hmm. And is this a, just another coincidence, or do we have a deliberate purchasing of the land to ensure that when they do apply for resource consent, there won't be any problems because if the owners don't object to the proposed activity, um, well, they'll just go ahead and get it. And the other thing I thought was really interesting is Aquila means eagle in Latin. And it reminds me of the best-selling novel called The Eagle Has Landed when the Germans infiltrated the east coast of England during World War II. I don't know if anybody, any of you have read it. I can't remember the author, but that was what he called it, The Eagle Has Landed. Yes. And it sounds like we've got eagles landing here in multiplications. Uh, certainly since the quake we, we had <laughs> eagles landing everywhere, didn't we, through that period and, and oh, we'll get on to that shortly too. We'll, I think we'll they call it about... Big Bucky down here, a Big Bucky they <laughs> call it, not the eagle. Big Bucky. Yeah. Mm. Okay, there seems to be an influx of Texan uh, oil companies in Canterbury at the moment and you think this is related, do you think it's related to, the, to Nikki Hager who's recently uh, released a book detailing National Party chumminess with uh, the US military sources? Many of the US military hawks come from Texas. Yes, I think there's only one Texan oil company that's operating here which is called Andarco but we also have... Um there's a great deal of Texan um, business interest in Canterbury at the moment, which could well be linked to the fact that Christchurch is very strategically important for the Pacific and is located as the gateway to developing and mineral rich Antarctic. Um, um, I've been told that due to the quakes affecting the City Council finances, the vitally important Christchurch Airport and Littleton Port might have to be sold to international interests, which would certainly increase um, outside corporations control of our future. I mean, if they control the airport and they control the port, um, which is the gateway to the South Island, we've got another, last week, another Texan company which is called Sears, C-E-R-E-S, and they're apparently enormous and they're going to fly their demolition equipment in on sky fighters. They're demolition and construction people 
and then the headlands wanting to develop a huge demolition dump in opposition to the city council, whose current income is derived from quake demolishing, demolition dumping costs. Um, as you can imagine, the city council, the rates of, you know, the costs they've got at the moment are enormous, and um, they certainly don't want to sell off the airport and port, but they might be forced to. Uh, Sears owner is the rich list. I gather he's on the world rich list, David McIntyre. And it's reported he's been in and out of Christchurch from December looking at investments and rebuilding Christchurch. But when I looked at this, I thought, well, that's really surprising. Why, why did he start looking in December when we didn't actually need a huge amount of international investment in Central Christchurch until after the February 22nd quake harm? It just seemed really extraordinary. I mean, there may be no connection at all, but it did seem rather odd. Hmm. There's been huge fears in Christchurch, Penny, um, at the moment that another huge quake is due between September the 26th and 28th. Only this time they're talking tidal wave, clearing the remaining population out on the Pegasus Bay coastline. Now, this has been reported across many mainstream radio networks after a pamphlet drop was made uh, to strategic areas of Christchurch. The pamphlet drop was organised by religious affiliations, I believe. Um, at the same time, we have Ken Ring, the moon man, uh, have, with his predictions over this period. And, of course, there's a lot of internet hype uh, we call fear porn around uh, these dates about com the passing of Comet Alanin. Well, I don't know about Comet Alanin. I don't know. I've certainly heard many reports of this offshore quake and tidal wave, and I've heard how advantageous it would be for oil companies to completely clear the population of Pegasus Bay, which is the only larger area with sublease shelf for oil rigs on the supposed to be oil and gas rich Canterbury East Coast. Um, the local people down in those areas are, are really annoyed because the government's issued red stickers telling them they can't live in these lovely areas because of the quake damage. Um, but they, the government's refusing to release the geo reports, which <laughs> the government says shows the land is not safe to live in. Well, if I was living where I've got a red sticker, I would want to know what the geo reports say, and I would want to know why I'm not allowed to look at the geo reports. Certainly, and I know this is this is the extraordinary thing. I mean, if the government says the geo report says you can't live there, surely they can at least let the people see what what the um, results of the geo report are. They say they'll show it to them after the election. Oh, I don't know what I don't know what will be the difference.